my name is Debbie Fingus, and I'm the Minister of Music at Trinity United Church in Coburg. Today we're going to learn about Shelley and Foreign Hand. So if you've never done Shelley or Foreign Hand before, this is the place for you to be. Before we begin, I want to talk to you a little bit about the clapper mechanism in your bell. You'll notice that your, the clapper of your bell only strikes the bell in one direction. It's not like a school bell that kind of wiggles all over. You already know this, and that's why we always go this way, so it goes back and forth. It's really important when we're doing Shelley and foreign hand to remember where your um, clapper is ringing and touching the bell. For Shelley, we are going to be ringing two bells in one hand where the clappers are going to go in the same direction. And what that means is that you can only bring those two bells together. You can't ring them independently. You do Shelley ringing when you're doubling octaves in a piece. Often it will have, you know, the six and the seven above it, and it's always those two. Um, or if you're going to ring any two notes with the same hand, um, that works as well, as long as it's consistent and you don't need to switch between ringing two bells together and independently. It's easier to mart than foreign hand, so if you do have a passage where you have to mart two bells in one hand um, because both clappers are going up and down, you can mart them both um, together. So, and uh, you get a nice, strong, consistent sound with Shelly ringing. To set up for Shelly, you take your bell, and this is our regular, regular ringing with your handle towards you. You turn it 90 degrees. So now the letter name on the handle is facing the ceiling and put it down on top of the other bell. So it looks like this, facing in, facing in. And then you take your pointer finger, put it between the two bells your other three fingers wrap, will wrap around and your thumb on the other side and pick them up. So now I've got my pointer finger, my other fingers, my thumb, and both of my bells are facing the same way. I've got both of the handles like this. And I can ring both bells at the same time. So I'm gonna do the other hand, same thing, turn in, Put it on top, point your finger in between, and pick it up. So now I have both of them. So if you can see, this is what it look, grasp looks like from both directions, like that. Okay, so I have some examples of a couple of exercises that we're going to do. If you have spoons or anything, you can pretend are bells or real bells, even better. So here we go. Count us in. One. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. To damp your, your shelly bells, you're just going to go up and over the top. Just up and over. Another exercise that's really useful is getting in and out of Shelly because you probably won't be holding your bells in Shelly for the whole piece. So um, in order to do that, we're going to do a little practicing. You're going to look for a spot in your music where you're not doing anything and that's where you'll pick it up. You can either shoulder damp and then get rid of your bell or pick it up or you can table damp it. So um, either works. So here we go. One, two, here we are. We've got single bells going down. One, two, here we go, and one, two, here we go, two, three, four, and it's important to get comfortable with that motion of getting in and out quickly when you're already holding the bell, just kind of opening up these two fingers and going down and picking up your other bell. Forehand um, is used when doubling octaves 
is being used, like you've got ENF6 and you have ENF7, and um, you don't always ring them at the same time. Or it can be used if, like I have here, I have G and A and B and C. And so if we didn't have enough ringers, my director might say, oh, can you ring G, A, B, and C? So I'd be ringing two positions. Um, or if I have accidentals and I need to quickly um, grab them without, and I don't have time to weave, then uh, picking them up and ringing it forehand can be really useful that way. I'm gonna set up in thirds, which means I'm gonna ring G in my left hand, A in my right, B in my left hand, C in my right, just as if I was ringing position G and A and then position with B and C. Um, so to, uh, to set up your foreign hand, it's different to Shelley because the um, handles don't place the same direction. Remember the clapper, um, we have to know which direction it goes and it's gonna go in a separate direction. So we're going to turn the bell towards me so that I can put, I can see right through and onto the table. So get my bell and I'm going to put it down 90 degrees with um, facing inwards and towards me. So it looks like this. Same thing on the other side. I'm gonna go inwards and towards. Pick them up exactly the same way. Point your finger in the middle. So the one bell will go back and forth this way. And then if I turn to make the other bell go back and forth. So we're gonna be doing some turning this way. Or if you wanna think about it, we're gonna be ringing primary bell, that's rung regularly, and then turn, push up for the, for the uh, secondary bell. So ring regular, turn, push up. We don't gonna do too much wrist action down. We're still gonna ring up. And the primary bell, um, in this case I have G and A because they're the bigger of the two. Um, they're, they're the ones that I have um, in my hand first. Those are the ones that will be run regularly. But then when I pick up the other two, Those are the secondary bell. So ring regular for G and A, B, C. I have a, um, oh, so for damping, you'll notice that for my regular bells, it's just regular damping back and forth. When I ring this way, you're gonna have to bring it up and over the top. You can also table damp your foreign hand. Right, you can go down to the table, or um, you'll see sometimes if you need to grab, you can ring here, but you don't want to be doing that all of the time. It's not, not as pretty. We want to make sure we're keeping everything nice and high. So let's bring through this exercise together. Um, here we go. One, two, three, four. So any kind of combination you want to write it for yourself of uh, four of your four consecutive notes, then you can practice with four in hand. The second exercise 
um, has to do with ringing two notes together in four in hand. So let's try this. You're going to be um, sometimes having to ring uh, two notes in different hand, two notes in the same hand, two notes in the same hand. It's kind of a sweet spot around 11 o'clock or around one o'clock where you can ring them both at the same time. And it really is a, uh, a practice thing. So to get them both together. So we're gonna try this exercise. Here we go. One, two, three, and. Good, yeah, so that's an exercise you can practice too. You can just write out any combination, practice ringing different combinations um, together and separately for when you're practicing ringing things together. And the last thing I wanted to show you, which is a little tricky, is what do you do when you have an accidental in your piece? So you've got G, A, B, C, but now I have a B flat, and um, you know, I have to, be able to get to my to my B flat. So if that was the case, in my left hand I have G and I have a B, and my B is my outside bell, and that's really important to remember um, because uh, you want the one on the outside to be the one that you're getting rid of, right? Otherwise, this inside bell is really hard to get out of your hand. So it, I can put down my outside bell. And just like we did with the Shelly, I can pick up my B flat. Now I have my B flat. So I can ring G, oh, I'm starting with this, a G, and then B. I'm gonna get rid of B, pick up B flat, then I have a B flat in my hand. No G, still. So G, B flat, then G, B natural. So, in this, uh, particular exercise, I have, um, I'm going to pretend that I'm ringing C, D, E, F. I have an C, D, E, F. I have an F sharp and I have an E flat. So I'm going to make sure that E flat and, or E and F are um, secondary bells, which they would be if I was in third. So I'd have C, D, then E, and F, so E and F are on the outside, and I'm gonna use these two bells as my sharp and my flat. So here we go, let's see how we make it with this. I'll take it a little bit slower so we can practice getting back and forth. So we go one, two, three, four. So we're just walking up and go back down. Then we're going to be switching to the F sharp. I switched back. Now I'm going to go, I need the E flat. That's an F natural. Of course, I was using different bells to what was written, but uh, that's the general idea. You have to make sure that you think far enough ahead that you can switch both into your sharp and back out of it for when it's no longer an accidental. So that involves marking marking your music. So factors um, that to consider when you're setting up your, uh, your foreign hand, um, you might want to put your bells in circum some circumstances in chromatic order. So you might want G and A in one hand and B and C in the other so that you end up with G, A, B, C. 
that's one possibility. Um, the disadvantage is that often we play um, thirds together, and so having those in one hand is, is really useful, but some, there are some passages and it might pay to, to set that up, and a lot of people like to play that way as well. Um, ease of damping, so, so it's harder to damp that first bell while you're ringing the second, so if you had a passage that there was a lot of um, but you still had to throw in some other bells, it would be better than going, um, it would be better than having, um, uh, you know, you can go back and forth very quickly. So it would be better to get those bells in, into separate hands in that case. Um, changing of accidentals, where it, are the accidentals and uh, making the bell that you need to get out of your hand as your secondary bell. That's the bell that you're not really holding on to. Um, or for techniques. So um, it's easier to march your secondary bell um, than it would be to your primary because your primary um, is your clapper's going the wrong direction. So, um, you know, if you have a mart and it's only for one of the bells, that's something to consider um, as well. So it's really a mapping it out kind of process, looking at your music and doing a score study, making sure you know where you're going to use what technique um, and when you need to pick up for Shelley or for four in hand.